All right, guys, this is basically a voiceover because I learned something today with the verbal eat. And that is the fact that if you unplug the microphone with the camera still on, the external mic, and then plug it back in, your audio fails. So, beyond that point, I'm going to do a voiceover and I'm on the bike, so don't listen to the motorcycle sound because it's not going to match the video. However, the subject is still very pertinent. I don't know how many of you know that the U.S. Navy had a shooting in Norfolk, Virginia. And the shooter got through the ship, or excuse me, got through the gate. Then he got through the pier sentry. And then almost caught that fucking power line. I'm telling you, we got high fucking winds today. He got through the pier sentry, then he went up to the quarter deck of the ship and disarmed the petty officer of the watch. Now I know for a fact that the USS Mahan, Mahan, however you want to pronounce it, has females on board. Now was it a female petty officer of the watch? I'm not going to get into the uh, females should not be on combatants. All I know is sailors belong on ships and ships belong at sea. And consequently, motorcyclists belong on bikes and bikes belong on the road. But regardless, This civilian dude made it through two checkpoints and then got up to the quarter deck. Then he took the weapon off the quarter deck watch, which is the petty officer of the watch. The officer of the deck also has a gun. And I'm not going to get into what I really took note of with the time and shit, but yeah, actually I will. This happened at 11.20 at night. Now normally there's three people on the quarter deck. You got a messenger of the watch, an officer of the deck, and a petty officer of the watch. Civilians are not allowed on board after 10 o'clock. And this guy, from what I'm reading, had a Twit card. Transportation uh, worker. I don't I don't even want to go into it because it's just total fucking stupidity. But this clown got on board, disarmed the petty officer of the watch, took the gun, and then when the other ones came charging to correct that issue, the perpetrator shot a guy that was uh, 
well trained, I'll tell you that. You'll read it and you'll see military police, but I've checked into the guy's record and he knows better. However, he was going to the rescue and the guy knew him, obviously, and shot him first. And then his backup shot the perpetrator and killed his fucking ass. So, we lost one sailor. We lost one sailor out of it. And the press isn't paying any attention to it. And I can read between the lines and I'm quite familiar with the entire deal. Back in the day, when I was in, we were not allowed to insert a magazine into the weapon. We had a pouch, we had to verify. Now, keep in mind, I carried 45s back then, and I'm pretty sure they've already switched to the 9 mils, which carry 15 rounds in her double action. So, let me figure out here. All right. So it was either a female that he overpowered or a weak Petty Officer of the Watch, which I can go into that because everybody on a ship stands watch, whether you're a mess cook, whether you're a IT guy, the only ones that don't stand quarter deck watches are engineers. So, the guy overpowers the guard, the petty officer of the watch, takes the gun, first one charging up, he's doing the right thing, he gets shot and killed, and then his backup, which is probably the other watchstander, shoots the fucking guy. and kills him. So now that's two dead. <clears throat> but as I remember it, in Navy training, they don't teach you to, if you're right-handed, stand with your left foot forward in a confrontational situation in order to protect your weapon. I mean, I'm, I'm really spun up about this because the Navy will take you out and teach you how to shoot the gun. But as far as protecting your weapon, they didn't teach them that. Now keep in mind, I've been to war twice. 
So I know these things, and I pass that on to my fellows, my fellow sailors, that you need to be able to do this, and if somebody tries to grab you, you do this. And I was so well respected that when I was in the Adriatic Sea and the Persian Gulf and we would have to board ships, I was the first one up. And he said, here's a shotgun. I said, that's fine. I need that. And I said, I also need a 45. Because that's what we carried back then. And, uh, well, what do you need a 45 for? What if the shotgun fucking misfires? Oh, you're right. Pretty soon they learned me really well. So when it came to boarding parties, I was the first one up. I would get up on the ship. And anybody that was, any opposition that was there, never had to kill anybody there. Had to kill them elsewhere, but any opposition that was there, I would back them the fuck up until my, my backup got on board. Because as the first one on board, you have to neutralize everything to get the rest of your people on board. So I did that. Ah! 50 mile an hour winds, how you like this shit? But. Yeah, and I also take note that the press isn't uh, giving it any attention. Because, ah, uh, meh, just another, just another sailor dead. But nobody's covering why. Here we go, down power line. Nobody's covering why or how this. I'm sure. I'm sure the Navy will figure it out. But this is shit. I tried to teach them. Fucking way back when, and they still haven't. They still haven't fixed it. And if you've served in the military and you've served in combat and then gone to uh, the quote peacetime navy, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. It's fucking flat out fucking embarrassing. And I'm pretty pissed off about it, but oh well. Shit happens, right? And another service member is dead. Do I expect this video to make a fucking difference with him? No. Do I expect Congress or anybody else to see it and pay attention to it? No. They'll do their fucking investigation. But they don't get it. They won't get it. So, NT8 off the bike. Talk to you later.